Hello everybody out there and welcome to a, I want to say a very special edition of Bolts Breakdown. It's got a... It's the last home game for uh, Christmas. That's right. It'll be our, this is actually our last face-to-face -face Bolts Breakdown of 2018. It's been a heck of a year, hasn't it? It has been. It's been we, didn't nice. even, we didn't even talk about this before. We just, boom, went live on the camera and then boom, let's talk about that. I mean, we'll be um, going face-to-face -face on the road when, uh, oh no, I'm going to be gone. Yeah. Yeah, so we're going to have to be, figure something out. Yeah, I'm going, I'm leaving early for, uh, I'm going to Montreal for a few days while the team's out I'll in Western Canada, and then going to my wife's family for Christmas, so I'll be doing it, I'll be on the road, going on a little road team action. Road on road. I'll yeah. be up in New York visiting the family. I leave on Monday, and then I'll be back to, for that Canadians game that's I'm Saturday. sure it'll go extremely smoothly. Oh, with, yeah, definitely. Uh, with the echoes. Yeah. <laughs> I've already been working on the echoes, folks, okay? We've been talking about it. I think i got to use my headphones or something like that, but we will definitely work it out. But besides that, besides it being our last Bolts Breakdown, of 2018 here at Amelie Arena. It just got a special feel today, Bernsey. I know we're going to get into that. we got to get into Monday night's game first uh, against the New York Rangers. But, man, there's just a – I don't know what it is, man. There is like a playoff-type feel. I hate when people say it, but I'm going to say it. Uh, it just feels like that. The atmosphere, you could – There's. I don't know if because there's more media here or yeah. you see guys like Brendan Shanahan, a Hall of Famer, walking around the, the halls of Amelie Arena here. But there's just something special going on. Uh, with this game tonight with two of the best teams in the NHL, two of the top teams in the Atlantic Division. We'll get to that in a second, but let's go back to Monday night's game again. Brian Burns, beat writer for TampaBayLightning.com, JRetro95.3, WDAE. As always, let us know where you're watching Bolts Breakdown from. Put it there at the bottom of the screen, and we'll definitely shout you out. I like Monday night's game against the Rangers because you'd think going into last weekend's you know, game, it's Saturday against the Colorado Avalanche, a team that, you know, is right near the top of that central division. You thought they'd give the Lightning some trouble, but last game of a road trip, the Lightning handled them pretty easy. Yeah. You look at the game Monday night against the Rangers, a team that's kind of in the middle of the pack. There's some old players on that team, some young players, but they came out with a vengeance. Yeah. They had some big they were hits. Feisty. They were. They really played their tails off, uh, and I think it was one of those games where the Lightning showed again that they can win multiple kinds of ways, and a team like the Rangers, who doesn't have as much talent but plays with a lot of want to, that compete level that John Cooper talks about. They had a really high compete level, and I thought it was really impressive to finish that game off like the Lightning did. Yeah, I thought it was good to see the Lightnings bounce back in that game. Mm -hmm. A couple times where they went down by yeah, a goal twice. where they were able to respond, and then uh, once they got that third goal, it was just kind of like floodgates opening again. We've seen this so often with this Lightning team. It's just like once they get that one goal, it, it, it kind of sparks a, a few more. It's like you get one, and then it, it turns into three or four. Yeah. Uh, and it happens in the blink of an eye, and other teams are just kind of like, what just happened, you know? <laughs> and that's how, that's how this team operates, and I thought it was really good to see the Lightning bounce back, uh, and then they went through that spurt where they, you know, they just scored a, a few goals. I thought a little bit when it was 3-2 to two, Lightning, I thought there was a few opportunities they left on the table. Yeah. I thought they had a good chance to, to really blow that thing open a little bit earlier than they did. Uh, and I thought maybe it might come back to haunt them. You know, early in the third period, it was still 3-2. Then New York started getting their skates into the game a little bit and maybe had a little bit of belief that uh, they could come back and win that game. And I thought that fourth goal was the key goal. Uh, was that the Sorelli goal? Yeah, because mm -hmm. it was the game-winning goal. I, I thought once they got that Sorelli goal, then you saw Stammer score right after that and then and, and the empty netter. But uh, I thought once they got that fourth goal, that was pretty much you know game over at that point. Once they got the two goal lead, it was going to be too much for New York to come back from it. And, and like I said, I thought that was a feisty New York squad. I, I really liked what they were able to do, especially at moments there in the first period. They had the Lightning on their heels yeah, for did. a little bit, and the Lightning were kind of making some mistakes that they haven't made during this uh, seven-game win streak. But uh, and that's why I thought the bounce back from the Lightning was so key. The way that they were able to just kind of. Uh, absorb, you know, what New York was doing to them and, and then, you know, insert their own uh, mark on the game when it was time. Yeah, obviously one of the big stories of, from that game is Steven Stamkos. Five goals now uh, after that hat trick against yeah. the Rangers. Five goals in his last two, eight goals in his last seven. Let me ask you this. You go to a game. Are you throwing your hat on the ice if someone gets a hat trick? If, I never if your have. your team does? I, I value my hats too much. That's how I am. Yeah, there's like, no way I'm throwing my hat on the ice. The only way I'm throwing my hat out there is if, if you know, it's, if it's a giveaway. And yes, you get giveaway one night. In, okay, yeah, I'm with that. Thing's easily going out on the ice. But yeah. if I'm wearing like, if I have a hat on, it's a hat that I like. Like I'm not just <laughs> throwing that out there. Just because, we love you, but yeah, I mean, especially if it's yeah, a good job. I know with a hat it was trick, a home but, team, but yeah. Yeah, it goes to charity, so I know it's a good cause. Definitely not if it's a road guy. Yeah, if it's a road guy. I know some people just want to throw something on the ice and not get in trouble for it. But no, I'm with you, man. I'm not a. You know, I don't know if I'd throw my hat uh, on the ice. Tommy Larson, shout out to you, Stockholm signing in. Okay, 
We talked about the Rangers. We talked about Stamkos. Let's get to the big news of the day now that everybody's with you. Jordana watching from Hollywood. Tim, Vera, thank you very much. John Zaleski, happy holidays. As always, right here on Bolts Breakdown, Brian Burns, Jay Retro here with you. Put there at the bottom of the screen where you're watching from tonight and today. And also let us know how you feel about this guy being back in the lineup. It is official. John Cooper announced it this morning after morning skate. The big cat, Andre Vasilevsky, will be in between the pipes tonight for the Tampa Bay Lightning after missing a good chunk of time. Shout out to Louis Domingue for how good that he's done for this team. But there's no replacing the big cat. You're talking about one of the best goalies in the world, if not the best goalie in the world. And just talking to Steven Stamkos as well as Braden Point after practice today. And if you missed any of that, make sure you check us out on Twitter, B Burns NHL, Jay Retcher. Uh, we've put some quotes, some I know I put some videos up there, but Burnsy, it's got to be great to see Andre Vasilevsky yeah. in between the pipes for this Bolts team against what we think could be their biggest rival for the next 5, 10, 15 years. Yeah, uh, you know, when he was injured, it was four to six weeks, they said, uh, that he would be. Uh, and by the way, uh, it's not after, uh, it's not the beginning of the new year. We were year, both so, wrong, because uh, you said after Christmas. I thought after before, Christmas, yeah. I didn't think came, he'd be. He came back so quickly. I yeah. mean, it's so funny, because a, less than a week ago, he still had the walking boot on. Right. But he's such a determined guy that he just couldn't. He just couldn't wait. And then you're looking at him in practice. He looks good. He's moving side to side. Yeah, same movement. Like, yeah. what you would expect to see from Andre, like, yesterday at practice. Like, just watching that. And I love Louis Domingue, what he's been able to do here. Lightning went 12-2 and two with Vasilevsky out. But there are moments where maybe two. he overcommits and he gets himself a little bit out of position. With Vasilevsky, he's just so smooth yeah. and controlled in his crease. The movement side to side is better than anybody else in the league. And uh, it's a treat to see him back in the net again. But, yeah, 12-2 and two without him. Who would have thought that would I happen? Know. That they we thought you know just going to about 500 with him out would, would be you know a good look for the Lightning. Uh, but yeah, four weeks. Yesterday was the four week mark, so he comes back pretty much right at the low end of the spectrum. And you know some people are saying should you throw him in there against Toronto? Uh, I mean you're gonna have to throw him in there at some point. That's what John Cooper was yeah, saying. Yeah, this today. is just you know it's one of 82 games. Yeah, it's a big matchup. Uh, yeah, it's against the team that, that's number two in the uh, in the division and against your who looks like it's going to be your big divisional rival this year for the Atlantic Division Championship. Uh, but you got to get him in there at some point. He needs to get back in. He needs to see that game action. They got him a really good practice yesterday where they did a lot of game action type of stuff and they felt like he was able to handle it. Mm -hmm. uh, the injury is fine. There, there's no concern about is he going to re-aggravate something. Uh, it's more about the conditioning. Is yes. his cardio there? And they felt like what he's been able to do the last couple of games, what he was able to do in practice yesterday. Uh, they talked to him afterwards, and the the, the cardio was there. The uh, uh, his, his uh, conditioning was yeah. there. That's the word I'm looking for. There you go. His conditioning was there, and they feel like he's able to handle that workload and. Uh, to get him back, especially going on before this Western Canada trip, which I'm looking at, like, this is a sneakily, a sneaky, mm -hmm. tough trip. You go to Winnipeg, which is always a hard place to play, uh, play in. Vancouver, which, you know, started the year was really good. They've tailed off considerably since then, but uh, you they never really got, know. They, did get just, they just got Brock Besser back. Yeah. So I mean, that's one of, we know how there. good he is from the All-Star game last year. He had a hat trick the other night. So you're right. You one never know trips, you really know. what you're going to get yeah. from the Lightning in Vancouver. Then Long Calgary, which is, like, the hottest team in the league right now yeah. other than the lightning i mean they've been playing lights out they're first in the western conference right now and then edmonton has snuck back into the playoff mm -hmm. picture they're playing better so those are four pretty good teams that they're gonna have to go up against they're gonna need andre vasilevsky they're probably gonna need louis Domingue at some point on that trip uh, so i think it's good to get vasilevsky back in yeah you mentioned uh, oilers i love the bringing ken hitchcock in there you know a guy that's uh, one of the best coaches i yeah. think we've seen you know his time with dallas and columbus and he's just been everywhere so he's a guy that going up to edmonton gives them a little structure and helps Connor mcdavid and kind of sets uh, the line all the way down so that they have one voice and you know they got some talent on that team that's definitely you know you got to worry about remember last yeah. year when they went up there to i edmonton. think that's the last one on that road trip too so always at those western canada trips the last game uh, i've seen it many times where, where they've you know just kind of laid an egg it yeah. seems like it's in edmonton too they just see the lay an egg and uh, you know, guys wanting to get back home, ready for the holidays, Look at ready Colorado. for that break. The yeah. other side, you know, Colorado just did that when they came here, their last game of the road trip, yeah. and they really struggled against Look the Tampa Look at the Bay Lightning Lightning. in Arizona. Yeah. You know, 7-1 loss to Arizona at the end of that long road trip. So that's a that's a tough trip. You you want both of these guys, and I think it's good to get Vazzy back in now before you go on that trip. So he's kind of at his 
Uh, I don't know if he's going to be like 100% conditioning wise or where he would want to be, but at least you, you knock a little bit of that rust off before you go on that trip. Brian Behrens, beat writer for TampaBayLightning.com. Jay Retchard, 95.3 WDAE. Again, make sure you let us know where you're watching Bolt's breakdown from. Put it there at the bottom of the screen. Share this on your Facebook as well. Let's get that message out to everybody. And tell us, are you nervous at all that Andre Vasilevsky has come back too soon? Uh, Corey Brown, I want to answer your question real quick. Uh, Anton Strawman, I know John Cooper mentioned he's inching closer. Yeah. He won't play tonight. I Not did tonight. see him on the ice today uh, skating around. It seemed like he was in good spirits. I was right there when he was signing some autographs. So getting a little bit closer and closer with Strawman. Uh, but the whole thing with Vasilevsky, I know we just talked about with the conditioning. I think it's a difference when you're talking about something with the muscle compared to something yeah. like a broken bone. Because the broken bone, I don't know how much you have to worry about. If you're completely healed, and the x-rays say, and the doctors say that you're completely healed, yeah. I don't know how much of a risk you are of re-breaking it. You know, a muscle yeah. thing is one of those things you don't really know, but that's why there's a little more of a set time frame when you're talking about a broken bone. I wouldn't be worried about it. You have to trust this Tampa Bay Lightning organization because yeah. they've never rushed anybody back. Every How many times have we seen a guy really go out and then, you know, for a while, then they bring him back and he gets re-injured? The only guy I could think about was Ryan Callahan. Yeah, Callahan. That was a little bit of a kind of a quirky issue kind and of thing. And that's like a different cat, too, with yeah. Callahan because yeah. he's going to want to get back no he's matter He's not going to ease his way into yeah. it either. So, I mean, that may be the one thing, but I look at all the other injuries that everybody's had, whether it was, you know, they're dealing with Strawman right yeah. now. The yeah, they could have brought Strawman. Yeah. back and maybe he like really re-aggravated whatever it is yeah. that he's dealing with and he's out for you know until you know, march april who knows like that. Yeah. yeah he might not he might be out we see that now there's a couple of guys that are out for the entire year guys like auntie ronta out in uh, yeah. arizona there's another guy that's not coming to my mind but uh, another guy that's out for a really long time so sean chowanik just tuned in is vazzy playing tonight yes he is vassy will be between the pipes tonight how you feeling about it feel free to put him there at the bottom of the screen sean because I i'm also a little nervous Domingue has been playing absolutely amazing yeah i agree he has been playing well but there's a big difference between louis Domingue and a guy that's a vez and a finalist and i wouldn't be surprised if you saw louis for a game on that western trip no not at all and you know up front, like I fully expect the Lightning to lose tonight. I, I, just because, <laughs> listen not, to this guy. Just because, like, it seems like I, I see this all the time. Like a mm. team's rolling right along, everything's good, and then you've got this guy that's like on the bench that's been injured, and you're like, he gets healthy, and you're like, okay, we're gonna start him in, we're gonna be even better. But it seems like for whatever reason, it, it disrupts, and it's not like Vazzy's gonna play poorly or the team's gonna play poorly, but it just always seems like it kind of disrupts the flow that the team's in. Mm. So I can understand why people are saying Domingue should play, but you gotta look at the long term picture here, like Vazzy. He needs to be in there. He needs to play. He needs to knock the rust off yeah. tonight. This is your guy. Uh, Louis Domingue did an amazing job for this team while Andre Vasilevsky was injured, but Andre Vasilevsky is your guy, and you need him in there. So get him in there as soon as he's ready to go. Knock some of that rust off. It's only one of 82 games. If they lose tonight, oh, well. You're only yeah. four points in front of the yeah. uh, the rest of the, yeah. the NHL in the standings right now. But uh, you want to get him healthy, get him going again. So you have two great goalies going throughout the rest of this, uh, you know, the two-thirds of the regular season that's left. Yeah, Michael Rawlinson, Vassie playing tonight more. I'm just getting him back up to game speed. Get him, you know, if you're going to get him some action, Get him some action at home so we can get all the treatment that he wants before the game, after the game. Guys, I saw him after morning skate today. He was out there in the starter's net, and he was in the locker room. This guy is full of confidence. He's in shape. He is ready to go. He kind of gave me that look, and I gave him one of the head nods, and he he's ready to roll, man. This guy, it's not – don't be worried that he's not ready. Yeah. Because, all right, you may be worried physically. You may think that he's a little rusty physically, getting back to game speed, but mentally – this guy is as sharp as they come. He wants to be out there 100%, so I'm not 100%, I'm not worried about it at all. I think he's going to be ready to go, but I, I see what you're saying. You see things where I just, you, I've seen yeah. that all the time, like <laughs> even in, you know, in leagues outside of the NHL. Yeah. You feel like you're getting this guy back, and all of a sudden you should be that much better, but for whatever reason, like maybe guys are playing a little bit looser because they mm -hmm. think they've got Vasilevsky now. And I thought that was something good that Steven Stamkos yeah, right. said. Yep. He addressed that, which, which gives you a little bit more confidence that, you know, they realize just because Vasilevsky's back there, they can't all of a sudden, like, forget about the defensive zone and just think he's going to cover up all your mistakes. Like, you need to play the same way that you've been playing with Louis Domingue back there. And it might be easier to do that, and the thing that might prevent Rawlinson? Yeah, man, I got you, baby. Uh, the one thing, that, I know what you're saying, but the one thing that I think about that may go against that is because you're playing a team like Toronto. Maybe yeah. if you're playing a team at the bottom of the standings and you go out there and you go, all right, you're playing, let's say, uh, the Devils, okay? And they're yeah. the bottom of the Metropolitan Division. You go, oh, let's get Vassian against a kind of a lower team. 
then everybody will let down. I don't think there can be a letdown because of how good Toronto is. And, man, you just feel it. We mentioned this in the beginning of Bolts Breakdown. You feel the atmosphere today. Their moms are on the trip. They're all jacked up. There's a ton of Toronto media here. It's just a different atmosphere when these guys are in town. So uh, I'm excited. So, Burnsy, let's get into tonight's game. What are your three keys to victory for the game tonight? Uh, number one for me is, like, let Stamkos eat. Let yeah, him continue man. To, to, to pile up those points and those goals. You look at where Steven Stamkos is for the month of December. He leads the league right now for, for December goals. He's, like, tied for second for scoring. So he's just been on an unbelievable tear. Probably the best I've seen him play over, you know, a two, three, four game I think stretch. So. Since and, his knee injury, I said the other day, since he injured his knee, I think this is the best Steven Stamkos we've seen. Yeah, I would have to agree. And uh, while he's playing like this, while he's uh, you know getting open, finding those shots, the power play has been working. The one timer on the power play has looked electric. Like let him, you know, continue feeding him the puck. Let him eat, eat that cereal, whatever you're doing there. Eat it up like Ezekiel Elliott, man. <laughs> let him eat. Uh, second for me, I think this is going to be a big key, is the point line versus the DeForest line. The, that's, and, and this isn't a, a team, a Toronto team, where you can just focus on that one line. Like, this is probably as deep a team throughout uh, the, you know, their four lines that can match up with the Lightning. They're probably talking about the two best teams as oh, far yeah. as their depth forward-wise. Mm -hmm. But that Tavares line, uh, especially with what Mitchell Marner has been able to do, uh, he's, he's been putting up points with, with just like crazy regularity. Uh, that's going to be the big matchup. And we saw, uh, I think it was the Colorado game, where we thought we might see the Paquette line a little bit mm -hmm. against that McKinnon line, but it was the point line pretty much the whole time. And they did a fantastic job of shutting those guys down. I think you'll see the point line again uh, against that Tavares line. So that means it'll probably be the Paquette line. Yeah, tonight, <laughs> because we say that. But Yeah, right? Coop watches this and then does the opposite sometimes. I know it, Coop. Just I know you're watching. Ones. Uh, but, yeah, I think that, that matchup is going to be a key to this game. Yeah, I think I it, because when they took that McKinnon line out of the Colorado game, that, that was all that they was had. It. That, that was, was it. it. That was game over. And then you saw what the result was, what, 7-1. to one. Mm -hmm. uh, And then, for me, third key is going to be the second period. You look at where both of these teams are, uh, goal differential-wise, the Lightning are plus 19 in the second period. Toronto is right behind them at plus 13. So these two teams do a lot of their damage in the second period. That's where they start to really impose their will. I think whichever team can impose their will in this second period tonight will probably be your victor. Without a doubt. As always here on Bolts Breakdown, we want to hear from you. Where are you watching Bolts Breakdown from? Put it there at the bottom of the screen. Share this on your Facebook. Let us know that you shared it and we shout you out. And who do you think is going to score the first goal for the Tampa Bay Lightning? Do those three things. Put them there and we will give you a shout out my one guy to watch he was actually on the ice he's still out there no he's he's gone william nylander okay this is a guy that was holding out with a bit of a contract issue but my gosh he is an unbelievable talent i was watching with brian engblom just now and the goal the goalie had like a little sliver on his shoulder and he found a way to kind of matriculate the puck and get it in there this guy thank you matriculate word of the day it's incredible, man, how talented this guy is. And you want to talk about depth, a little kind of compounding on your point from before. Their third line is Patrick Marlowe, I know, I was Nylander, and Nazem Kadri. Yeah. That's a damn good third line. And you have that line going against the line with Anthony Sorelli. It's going to be a heck of a matchup, man. And I think this is the key, is keeping an eye on Nylander. I still think he's trying to finding his way with this team just a little bit. But the clear advantage that the Lightning have, in my point, is on defense. Yeah, I, I like so. Morgan Riley. I like Jake Gardner. I think, you know, you got a veteran in Ron Hainsey. There's some good players back there. But there's a big difference between the Lightning defense and the Toronto defense. Freddie Anderson is playing at a Vezina caliber level this year. I think he, ha I think he will make the All-Star team this year. He's been that good. Uh, but their defense is where I think they leave a little bit to be desired. We talk about the trade deadline. I think they'll try to acquire somebody at the deadline for that blue line because they, they're trying to make that long run as well. Um, but, man, it's going to be a tough matchup. One thing that I read, and I wanted to get your opinion on this too, Bernsey, is I read something that when the Maple Leafs play a team with structure that they have difficulty. Yeah. And I think the one thing that we see about the Lightning is that they can play that up and down fast mm -hmm. style, but they can also slow the game down a little bit. We saw it in Colorado. We saw it in Colorado, exactly. Play that one nothing game. So when I read that and I thought about that one nothing win in Colorado, I said, if the Lightning want to change the tenor of this game a little bit, Instead of going, because this, a lot of people say, oh, big team, just like in that first Colorado game, it's going to be a track yeah. up and down. We might not see that. We might see a little bit more of a tighter game, especially if the Lightning are focused on defense and focused on making sure they don't leave Vasilevsky in his first game back out to dry. You could be looking at a little bit of a defensive kind of lockdown, shutdown game. And I think, in my opinion, that favors the Tampa Bay Lightning. 
Yeah, what you said earlier, a point you made about the Lightning, like the forward depth is there for both teams. What I like about the Lightning's forward depth, they have three lines that can pretty much be your defensive yeah. shutdown line. Like, mm -hmm. it's not just the point line. You could use the pocket line if you needed to. You could use the Sorelli line. The only one, I think the Stamkos line isn't that great of a, a two-way line. Uh, it's better, though, when you it's have, gotten better. like, a Palat guy. Yeah, with yeah. Andre Palat back up there, it's gotten to be you – know, it can be a little bit more of a shutdown line. But, but you look at the line, they have three lines that they could really rely on to be that shutdown line. You could go with the point line. Uh, and if that one's not working out, you can go with the pocket line. I think that's a great shutdown line if yeah. you really need it. And then the Sorelli line. I mean, those guys are tough. They know what they're doing in there. Sorelli is a guy that you wouldn't know it by looking at him, but he wins so many puck battles mm -hmm. along the wall. Just, uh, just He outfoxes guys. I mean, he's wiry, and he just kind of knows how to maneuver his body in a way that he's going to come out with the puck. So you've got three lines that you could really match up defensively against any of the Leafs lines, and I think you could have an advantage there. Let's get to some of your comments here. Robert Etuarte. First goal, Joseph, definitely three or four lines. Rougher play with speed. First goal and set tone. Uh, Sean lives in Detroit. Went to that game last week. Awesome, man. Uh, let's see. Dan Gish says Joseph first goal. Jim Fetters watching from Anna Maria Beach. What a beautiful. You've been there? I have. Anna Maria, I love that place. Corey Brown from Port Richie. Always, we appreciate your role. Springer, point. I like that. Uh, Bernsey, who do you think is going to score the first goal tonight? Put it on you. Oh, wow. Let's go Mikhail Sergachev. Sergachev. Let's Sergachev it's coming, man. Tonight. It is coming. Yeah. I'm going to go with Eric Chernak, then, if we're going to go with young defensemen that haven't scored a goal. But I wouldn't be surprised if Matthew Joseph scores tonight. You mentioned about, like, which line matches up with which one. I, I know that line is good with Nylander, Marlowe, and Kadri. But I think this is one of those games where they may look at that Sorelli line and not give him as much credence that he deserves. Yeah. And I think that third line with Matthew Joseph on it might – his speed might jump out at them. Yeah, but Joseph's been playing on the fourth line lately. Oh, that's so. right. That's right. But still, you know, you never know with John Cooper. Yeah. You know, it's a different day is a different line. Because he might. this could be one of those games where he switches it up. Yeah, Sorelli's been extremely hot of late. Four goals in his last three games. It's the only time he's ever been on a goal streak yeah. before in his career. I think he had like four goals in the first 29 games of the year, and now he's got four in the last three. So he's been on a really hot tear. Matthew Joseph has been on yep. a really hot tear, too. And that was one thing John Cooper talked about in his uh, post-morning skate press conference. You look at the Lightning and why they've been able to score so many goals. It's the Matthew Josephs, who has nine goals. The Cedric Paquettes, who's up there with seven goals. Yep. It's Anthony Sorelli chipping in eight. You just have depth all the way through, and you've got guys contributing, and it's really led to – you know, it's been a great product out on the ice for the Lightning so far this year. You could have 10 guys with 10 goals by the end of the year. By the end of this season? <laughs> yeah. And, That's yeah. not so far-fetched. No, I, mean, I think they've, crazy, they've got right? five now, and they've got you know three right there in Pocket, Sorelli, yeah. and uh, who's the other one that we were just talking about? Matthew, Matthew Joseph. Matthew Joseph, yeah. Those, you know, they're right there on the cusp. Mm -hmm. So and then we saw Andre Palat. You know, he only has two. He got his first two, but you expect he'll, he'll have ten by JT the end Miller, of the year. yeah, everybody will chip in. Uh, Sean Chonak says, I like Joseph on the first goal. Mike Rawlinson, Venice, he likes Johnson for the first goal. That's another guy, too. Sean's amount of steals Sorelli gets is unreal. Joey D'Angelo. Watch, watch Anthony Sorelli in, in, the, in a puck battle in the corner or along the back It's going to happen tonight. Like, that guy, there's so many times you feel like he's just going to get overpowered. And somehow he finds a way to keep the puck alive and get it to one of his guys. It's just it, it's phenomenal the way he plays the game like that. Chris says uh, point, and Joe says Stamkos. Maybe even Tyler Johnson. Who knows? All right, guys, we appreciate everybody for all that you do here for Bolts Breakdown. Man, it's a lot of fun when Brian and I do it. So thank you guys so much for all your support. As always, let us know where you're watching from. Share this thing on your Facebook. Let's spread the word out. Be the thunder. Uh, we appreciate everybody and all the support, man. It's really, really awesome to be able to do this every day. There's a game here uh, at Emily Arena or iHeart, wherever the heck Burnsy and I are in North America. That's Brian Burns, beat writer for TampaBayLightning.com. Make sure you follow him on Twitter at BBurnsNHL. Follow the team at TV Lightning. Go to TampaBayLightning.com for the best news and notes. I'm sure he's got stuff coming up about the great matchup against the Maple Leafs and the return of Andre Vasilevsky. Van Sean Vay Colston, Andre Palat, 1 8. All right. I'm Jay Retro. Follow me on Twitter at Jay Retro. Follow the station at 953 WDAE. Go to 953WDAE.com for the best Bolts coverage. Has somebody just said they love you. Is it Except Teresa Reed? I don't know. Do you know or Teresa Reed? Is it a Reed? player? I don't uh, know. It's probably a player. Teresa. Go Bolts. Teresa, who do you love? Bernsey, me, or somebody on the Lightning? I'm married, by the way, so. Yeah, and I got a girlfriend, so we're going <laughs> to. Well, yeah, I got a girlfriend. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Teresa. I'll talk to my girlfriend, though. We'll see if we can work something out. Uh, Bernsey, 
Jay Retcher with you. Make sure you listen to the game tonight. Up the dial on our sister station, 970 WFLA. You can watch it. I think it's on Fox Sports Sun tonight, right? I think so. I don't know, NBC Sports Network. But if it is, it's on one of those two channels. No, it's Fox. It's Fox? Yeah, it's Fox. It's Fox. He knows. This is the desk we right here. We had the Fox guys <laughs> in, the, uh, in the scrum this morning. There so, you yeah. go. Good stuff, as always. We appreciate everybody out there. We'll see you next time right here on Bolts Breakdown.